Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. It's Monday, so it's time for the Monday novice fight. All right, Ian Samoski, a one versus one between uh, eleventh Panzer and the Ace. Already their first novice mistake. It's eleventh. I never heard anyone say eleventh, and I sure do hope I never will have to. Otherwise, that might be the day I snap and commit homicide. Anyways, dual gunnery start here. Doctrines are Jägerama, Elite Troops, and Luftwaffe Supply. Fighting here for the Kampfgruppe Schultz versus Mate Man G74, who's already gone straight on for the Mech Shock Motor Heavy Tactics. And with several conscripts on the way, here's a Kungi fuel point right there. Bit of barbed wire there, point secure. They're already here, a bit too eager. Schnell, schnell, ah, don't forget the fuel. Interesting idea of wiring off. Usually something that happened in Company of Heroes, of course, but usually how the camping zones are done, it's a bit more less useful. And I'm inter certainly not sure why he did it like that, to be honest. It strikes me as a bit odd. Yeah. Comrades, we must place barbed wire and according to the glorious instructions laid down by Comrade Stalin. That's that one I don't know. That one just really boggles my mind. But Grenadiers yeah, on the way here right looks right like right. a rather Grenadier heavy start here for Mr. Ace. Pioneers ready for anything! Point there being secured. Conscripts moving ahead, third conscript squad they're arriving there. Ura. Third gun they squad almost there. You can quickly support with either the mortar and MG. And MG would not be a half bad idea. Rushing heavily for the centre. Now we're seeing a fourth gun they squad, so a pretty infantry heavy start here for the Kampf Gruber Schultz. Pioneers Ready. marching up the west yeah, flank. Nothing to cover that fuel point there. Need to be careful, careful. Vorsicht, meine Herren. More part why up there this time perhaps a bit more logically applied instead of just out in the middle of everywhere where the opponent can easily walk around it. I mean that's of course the idea they can use to sort of break up an enemy's movement even then this is hardly going to be the number one combat site so even that doesn't really serve that purpose. No purpose. But why going on on both sides? Definitely interesting to note here. First engage here between Grenadiers and Conscripts. Grenadiers need to quickly stop up and just open up. Fire fly, fire fly, men out. There we go, Walton. Oh, all the moving ones caught out into the open. It's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Also looks like we already see more up here from Made Man. Grenadiers quickly need to pull up into some cover of another kind. More Grenadiers moving in. Made Man G74 needs to be careful here. He's likely going to get overwhelmed. These Conscripts also need to move closer. And he's finding Trump over here. Kanska Swart there getting mowed down. He really should have either pulled it back or had the other squad up close. Support that substitution of Molotovs. Not really good engagement right there for Mate Man. That was a bit poorly handled. And now we got Molotov up only briefly stopped. And ultimately, he's still going to be facing off against three Gandhi squads at La Peak condition to a certain extent. Morgan is arriving. He needs more infantry up here or something. Kanska is getting pioneers up north. I cannot enough and I was arrived here for Ace. Panzer is moving in from the south. Could take up position in the cemetery, but even then. Also, right here, Ace is not really ha doing this very well. He could easily just move them into cover here. Instead, he's partly spreading out, which is alright, but even then, he's hardly handling this fight very well. I mean, get them up and cover, get them close, and they could easily outdo the. Conscript instead, he's remaining them out here in the open, which means they've got flank, which for some reason Mate Man seems reluctant to do, which is beyond me. I know he could easily do some serious damage to these kind of ears. Now we do have a mortar joining in there, finally the conscripts are right, but it's actually standing up in the middle of nowhere again. Negative cover is bad for you if you're the one standing in it. If the opponent is, great, shoot them with all your might and fury. If not, get the hell off the road. Munitions are available for a light machine gun or a rifle grenade, but again, a tacit refuel to really stick to cover, get into the building at the very least. Mortar rounds continue down again. Ace needs to get better at utilizing cover and decon. And he's a piece of moving head to take points. 
And looks like he's taking up pretty aggressively towards the taking third tier, in fact. Out of contact. Needs to be careful. The Russians here going for the field point. Well played. They're occupying the opponent here with a minor force in that regard. Decent strategic play. Delaying with a minor force, keeping up a larger force while he's then going for all the other points. Though he really needs to connect this a lot faster. And we're seeing a support M company up. Might see a Maxim. No, Shock Troopers. Shock Troopers. And this conscript for Oh, he finally got someone into cover. That's splendid. Of course, he gets it ruined by a Molotov. Conscript for their retreats. Molotov doing it right. This man has basically been pushing up to the front line. Come on. Mach schnell. And get some machine and give us up and also retake that fuel point again. There seems to be a bit of a sluggish reaction reaction pattern here from Ace. Certainly not very ace-like. Then we go nice walk into the right side of the cover. Coming under five for Mortic and this walk moving in. Nice hit right there, actually did a lot of damage to the conscripts. Cemetery wall still standing though. How long that lasts? few tombstones wrecked. Here we go, the conscripts. Ow! Oh, good lord! That was a nice mortar strike. And looks like these conscripts will then be interred in the cemetery they fought to defend for the Rodina. He probably could retreat a bit faster. Nice mine there, shock troops moving in. Going to ambush those fascists. Troops could easily move forwards there. A nice grenade around there. He's actually getting that one out in the open. Alright, that might shorten the loss of a squad there for Ace. No, because he didn't pursue. Not sure why he's moving ahead the motor crew like that. 4 6 Ace, 4 6. Comrades need to quickly move ahead. Again, sluggishness seems to be plaguing the things in terms of reactions. Has rushed ahead to the third tier, but so far doing nothing. Of course, due to the pro fuel point here. constantly being harassed, he's not going to be able to do much with it for some time soon anyway, so <laughs> hardly an issue as such, but even then. How can we help? And we're seeing a medic bunker going up. Still no sign of any upgrades for the gun. These would definitely help those of the conscripts. We're seeing, in fact, a bunker going up here. Eine Widerstandsnester set up here to cover this cut-off point. A bold idea, having the Grenadiers work on it as well, speeding things up, but even then he's going to need some minutes to upgrade it. I mean, in some senses, it's not a bad idea either. I certainly wouldn't call it a novice idea. I mean, he's not doing it within the first minutes of the game. Although, even then, I... Nice job there, actually using a smoke grenade. Very nice idea there by Made Man. Good use of the needle. Certainly cannot fault him for that. Now, of course, there's just a slight problem. Ura, come, lads, we're up here. Um, now what do we do? We don't actually have anything to damage the bunker and we're under fire from a mortar. I think this may have been a bad idea. And there we go, getting caught up here in front of the machine gun bunker. Mortar rounds landing down there. Betting you over the mortar. That mortar's actually paying off for itself quite nice there for Ace. That's good news for him, less good news for Made Man. He definitely needs to get his shock troopers out of there, they're not doing too well. Come on, Made Man. Get them out of there. They're not enemies of the Soviet peoples. Yet. Konsky's pulling back there from a bit of another harassment tour. Good job, by the way, keeping up constant pressure. And I'm surprised he actually didn't put the bunker up here to guard this vital fuel point instead of his cutoff point here. When I mean, he's largely not having much luck in projecting again, that's partly due to the sort of way he's playing with his force. He's not really, you know, setting up an actual front line or a strong point, which is rather making it hard for him. To low to any ground, it basically means any territorial gain Capture tends to be quickly lost. Enemy is taking our territory. And that is essentially one of the dangers of this heavy gun. They start in particular when there's a lack of light machine guns. Flammenwerfer up to the Pioneer. Nice job though, actually harassing his opponent's fuel. That's nice. A field gun up here for Mate Man G74. The 76mm divisional field gun. We have taken it. He's going to be engaging the conscripts behind an old tree. Conscript down. Nice monitor up there. Our opponents are seizing the sector. Pause was there. Pushed away, gloriously so. Ready as ready. 
More team team forwards. Einsatz bereit. Machine gun squad. Pioneers awaiting orders. Grenadiers reporting. We are losing the sector. Concerning this kind of bunker would have been the prime. Primary one you'd seen on the eastern front from the Germans since they wouldn't really have had much time to prepare. And you need to think sort of bigger part because the fear of abated. So in most cases this would have been the best, you know, basically a hole dug out in the ground, perhaps some trees lopped on top. Yes? As swiftly as that could be done. Very rarely would you actually find some bigger concrete bunkers. That was more a feature of Normandy in the sixth. Territory line. secured. But over to Mate Man G74. Three country squads, Come one submachine gun, equipped sock to the unit. Bunch of combat in years laying down mines, good, good, and a field gun. MD42 finally here. Field gun needs to pull back. He could consider, you know, with his weapon support, a uh, support boom coming in, which he really has used to much to get up on more than his own, of a maxim. Also, not necessarily the best idea to charge directly at the MD42, but nice usage of get of the smoke grenade. I mean, for a novice, he really seems to craft that part, which I hopefully, I hope he's he's learned from this channel. It was going to be a nice little thing, but there we go. We're under attack. What do you want? Taking fire. But immediately, nice job there, actually, from Ace shifting his MG42 up, sort of engaged from another angle. Watch out! Then he's continuing to hold that there, but again, not really most effective again, but not without a light machine gun. Can't they're getting fast, blasted, mortared. Shot at! Careful, don't clump up like that! Hardly a good assault there, he needs to pull back! And quickly find himself out maneuver there by Ace, and we've seen a second truck to the squad. That's quite expensive, we also know here a bit of a flaw and mistake there. Loping quite a bit of resources from Mr. Ace, in particular considering he's barely going to use up the field in the first place. He can't really afford to float that much resources. Not good, not healthy, not sensible. Also right there, lost his shield gun. He should have covered it up better. Country there trying to flank about. That's nice, that's nice, but a nice once more shift of the MG42 there. Catch the conscripts. His assault here will need to pull back. It's not looking good. Yes, the cavalry doesn't lose conscript squads like this. Mine hit, knocking out the field gun crew, lovely. Shark to be charging in, might be an interactive, no, oh, never mind, I would have said pop off the smoke grenade to cover the treating unit, but too late. The right now, he needs to pull back these grenadiers, they're going to get murdered there. Ace, unit preservation. Oh, good lord, this could be a huge turnabout here. No, somehow we're actually met, allowed to live, that was bloody well close. These grenadiers could also use to move forwards ahead. Vorwärts angreifen, anyhow. Still flooding out of resources. Still an impending urge to smack Ace a bit for that one. Well, not really an urge to smack, but you know. Rather an urge to voice my dissatisfaction considering the overall situation. He's getting a flak panzer out. Apparently feeling very confident in the chance of his opponent getting any armor out to counter his flak panzer. Vorwärts, Flakpanzer. Mit eure Flugzeugabwehrkanone. Of course, it's going to be quite handy against the shark troopers in particular, and certainly also the Contours a bit. But obviously, it's going to encounter some massive problems with any kind of armor. And we are seeing a tank V Battalion command up here for Mate Man G74. So I'm going to guess we might in fact see some tanks which will cause the flat panzer a bit of a headache. Lots of troops here, they could easily moving out to the front line. No mines up for Ace. Shock troops there encountering some very, very unpleasant resistance there from the flat panzer. With its 37mm gun. Going again for the fuel point, good constant fuel point harassment going in here from Mate Man. And again, there seems to be no overall interest from Pentagon in this. To sort of, you know, cover it up. We also now seeing a light to mechanize the company up. And finally, looks like some of all that manpower is actually going towards something. Careful there, careful. Don't punch up, don't punch up when you know there's a flag panzer around as well. Retreat, retreat. 
Oh no, he didn't even leave the mine. You don't stand around in your own mind, in particular with something with an AOE around. That was definitely a bit of a blunder right there by Made Man. And definitely resulting in a very, very easy kill here for the Flak Panzer. T-34 on the way. And he could probably get one as well within uh, about a minute, in fact. Here you get another T-34 and quickly rush it at the fascists. Also note, don't point it at the hedgerows. Ja, Heinz Sisley, we can look like we're actually taking part in the fight, but in reality, we're actually not. That should be up here. Mine engagement down here. Minesweeper's up, finally looks like he re reacted after all this. Mine's got a Minesweeper up there. Good job there, Ace. Although that rather make me... And yeah, I wasn't saying it to be sarcastic, by the way. Although, I mean, really, you know, when you say, good job there, Ace. You know, you're usually being sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, never mind. Also, fun fact, the Sailor actually had a modification for the T-34's four speeding mines. Basically a large sort of drum-like thing with lots of spikes on it. Basically rolling through the minefields like that. Fun little fact, fun little fact. The Germans generally actually didn't really have much in terms of minesweeping modifications for their vehicles. So that rather left it up to the pioneers themselves, usually. Another squad wiped out here. Mate man does need to be careful with his conscripts. He does seem to be a bit reckless at times. Also, considering the way he's playing now with lots of tanks, he hasn't got some conscript repair kits, you know. Really should do his best to get out some conscript tracks to help repair it. But well, there we go, T-34 rolling in. We do see the field gun setting up there to try and deal with the tank. Nice job there. Flag Panzer needs to be very, very careful. Field gun moving up. This is a bad idea. This is really you know, an absolutely bad idea. This is definitely not how you lay down mines. You do not do it right as the enemy is right there in front of you watching. That is bad. That is really, really a novice mistake. And again, rather than again, makes gives me that feeling that Ace is basically sometimes, you know, not quite, you know, keying his actions together as well as he could. And so you're not thinking for entirely. You easily risk these pioneers getting wiped out. Also, the flag is not really going to have much luck either. Again, there's like an infantry fighting around because, again, you know, he's not doing as well. Also, looks like he's chosen Dr. Piaz in Gave Air 43, which means he's actually gone for the Tiger Ace. And right there, Pioneer's flame for a tank of burst, and he actually moves his field gun into it. That is definitely a bad idea. Now we've got the mine itself was cooked off. Which basically means he lost his Pioneer's, he lost his field gun, and he wasted 60 million on a telemine. And that one's pretty inexcusable. Again, you don't do something like that. You don't begin building a mine right when your opponent can see it. Though again, Mate Man does need to work in his unit preservation. He's himself low on units. Oh, he's got a veterans 1T34 here already taking on that bunker. And we're noting that besides the field gun, there was nothing else really that. Ace here had to deal with tanks. Now there's several T-34s arriving. He's in trouble. There's a few Panzerman is mucking about, but that's really all there is. In fact, we need to get another T-34 in a, well, again, a minute. But again, he's replaced troops. That is good. Getting more conscripts to help folks on repair in the future. His T-34s. Good, good. And why is this? A Sturmgeschütz has arrived. Deutschland. And there we go. Troop training, getting one level of veteran to honor, giving him the target weak point ability that might help. Panzer's running into a bit of trouble. Might get wiped out. Also, note he's not moving because, again, tanks have more scattered while moving, meaning they're a lot less effective against infantry. So that's not a bad idea. Pushing up there. Another bunker right away. Again, he's doing nothing to protect his field point. Which you really think you should be focusing a lot more on. But now the Stuke's moving ahead. He's. he's don't move it around like it's a tank. It's not a tank. It's an assault gun. It hasn't got a turret. 
Alter should have saved up misses for the target weak point. There we go. Use it, use it, use it. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you pulling back towards the Oh good lord? I have no idea why he's calling himself Ace! That was definitely not Ace handling of a storm to shots. That was definitely not good. Recruiting the field gun right in front of the enemy. Kennedy is what he needs to retreat. You don't want to lose that one man. Come on, Ace. Rückzug. There we go. Apparently yelling at him works. MG oh, lost. So many units lost senselessly. He might be able to get that T-34. That would definitely be a small victory there. But Deutsch and Alt, I mean, he had access to panzer as well, but he didn't use it. He didn't use anything that really could have helped that Stu. Which even then brings up the question, why bother giving it troop training in the first place then? So many questions. Ostrin somehow is still functional. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Infantry advancing for the glory of the Rudina. Bank are upgraded. Oh, to get a bunk here. Both of them not upgraded, which basically means they might as well have been manpower wasted because he doesn't have the munition, because he's not holding sufficient parts of the map. Again, you know, his actions are beginning to be a lot less coherent as the game progresses. And his problems are increasingly beginning to show. I mean, he could also be using, you know, the stun grenades a bit to help things out. And again, note, what priority does he choose? Does he choose... The fuel point, which is right next to his base, which is constantly harassed, does he choose this one, which, you know, just gives a bit of fuel, a bit of munitions. He chooses this one. Also note here, actually Caravan using armor detection up. He's actually using troops. armor detection. He's actually ensuring he doesn't get caught off guard by a flak panzer rolling in or anything. That's actually pretty good. Clever. Also using conscript repairs there. Good. Also, when hit with the T-34s, I mean, yes, there are some prompts in the preservation, but ultimately, you know, he's still got a lot of good ideas, and he's sort of reasonably well managing them to sort of key them together, chain them together. Enemy forces are securing our territory. We have a forward Pack moving up. Attack. Shock troopers realise that the point is once more under the ages of the MD-42. No smoke grenades this time around, it would seem. Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers moving in with Gewehr 43, Karnat JKs, and Doom Gewehrs. But a T-34 moves in. Oh, he's blobbing up, he's blobbing in. Don't do that, don't do that. What are you thinking, man? Again, blobbing up is hardly the sign of an ace or a good player. T-34 here, not sure what he's doing that. He's definitely not good either. That was basically three veterans for that T-34. Infantry getting murdered by the T-34. Conscripts here, mine goes off, almost running out of Panzer Squad. This is just a massacre of what Ace has. Again, flopping up is rarely the answer, if never. A squad there lost. Everything's falling apart. He's trying to get the victory point up there with some Pioneer. Net 22, T-34 ready, and the flak Panzer moving out once more. Well, again, then, the overall prop and acting forwards for Ace and actually holding the territory he takes. T-34, really be careful, though. You should by now know your opponent has a pack 40. Oh, don't stop up. Don't stop up in front of a pack. Right there, I mean, he's not handling it very well. I think he's trying to flank the pack. Which is a nice idea, but overall, you know, he's not really considering the rest. Which is, you know, there's also Black Panther blocking the way. And also right here, they can still actually penetrate through the rear. And there we go. Oh, he just get, got a veteran to flee, but right there, I mean, that was just a waste of a good T-34 in the end. He didn't get the pack fully, he didn't get the Austrian fully. That could have been done a lot better by mate, man. And there we go, Flak Pants almost down now. And there we go, time for the mid-game analysis. Again, you know, problems with the unit preservation, problems are time with the tactics. In particular from Ace, there are some severe tactical deficiencies. Whereas, you know, Mick Mantoni seems to be handling that a bit better. In particular strategy, he seems to be a lot stronger in. 
overall map control so far in the hands of the Soviet Union. And, oh, right, I didn't determine a unit of the 30th Tank Corps. Compared to the Kampfgruppe Schultzrat here, who's certainly suffering a lot, and I would also say a lot needlessly. Poor use of cover at times, not really you know, taking up the best positions, and not really thinking about where the opponent might sneak in. And certainly not prioritizing bunkers well either. And of course, you know, poor Sturmgeschütz usage. Now, of course, getting another pack. Because this one's, of course, within the range of the opponent's tanks. Right now, what he needs to do is actually get himself another Stug. I think our pans have already do him well. Another Stug, properly supported this time around. Perhaps we can get it up to veterinary too, so it gets a bit of some minor bonuses. Properly supported with infantry, make a push, and then sort of go for things one step at a time. Take this area, then take this area, mine this bit, and you know, go towards here, hold this area, and that way perhaps slowly drain out the Soviet opponent, but no risky movements. And certainly always keeping an eye on those bloody flanks. So that would definitely help him a bit. A tie race might also be useful. But then that's going to be in a rather head-on charge here. Although again, keeping it supported. And hoping his opponent hasn't mined the crap out of the map. Of course, so far, not that many mines here. As for what main man could do, I mean, there are definitely possibilities. One of them would be, you know, further mines, although... Well, now there could be trying to save up for the RC-152. Then again, at this stage, you probably should be thinking, you know, again, after that, Veterans 1 Stug appearing out of nowhere, that, hmm, my opponent has probably gone Tiger Race. And considering the overall layout of the map, I can't blame him for not wanting to go for this one. I mean, on this map, the RC-152 will be struggling a bit, I think, against Tiger Race. On the other hand, saving up for this could prove quite nice if handled in the correct spot, for example, after ramming, or if he catches with a damaged engine in a spot already hard with, you know, terrain movement. That could, for example, prove quite handy. Otherwise, you know, more mines, more T-34s, but also more conscripts. Otherwise, you know, just try to take as much territory and drain as, as much resource from his opponent before the Tiger is arrived. And, of course, more mines. Always more mines. Is what I would suggest, and certainly he's done a good job at mining several spots, though so this could easily stand to have a few more fresh mines. A few more T-34s would also be good, though again, needs to display some proper preservation. Get the conscript to repairing this as soon as possible. But then again, it seems to be in actually working condition, so just grab it quickly before the enemy can find it at it, and then move towards here and get it repaired at the base with some conscripts. That would be a good job. And definitely help him again quickly build up a large armoured force, which could easily prove to be the demise of the Tigers, and of course the rest of what Ace has left in terms of forces. So, let's return here to Ace, and let's return to the fight. Osman down, Bunker once more in a lot of trouble. So is the Mortar, the Granatenwerfer. T-34 moving a bit too far ahead. There we go, almost wiped out. Bunker down. Infantry marching ahead, Panzer Vekanone moving up. T-34s need to consider moving away, he might also want to consider actually taking back this. Oh dear, come on, either get the tank or get it repaired, just do something with it, or even wreck it. Don't just stand about admiring. The Soviet craftsmanship that went into this in a factory in the Ural Mountains. Also, why are you charging at the forty like that? Oh dear, that's okay. He's calling in a bombing strike, but even then, that's not really necessary to get that damn close to the opponent. And there go T thirty four down. Almost got the pack, but not quite. So that was also a bit of waste of munitions and a tank. Definitely not a well realized risk, and again, T-34 standing a about. Here we go, the Tiger Ace has arrived. The one unit dreaded by so many, and I would say needlessly so. There we go, no more resources. He's trying this in a one last gamble to turn the tide here for the Kampfkorpf Schultz. The Tiger Ace. Still nothing done with the T-34. A veteran Tiger Ace crew member rolling ahead. 
Infantry remaining. Pack 4 to be crewed. Mortar filing away. Panthers arriving. Mortar round. Rather does manage to knock out the tank. Hunter needs to get out of there again. Unfortunately, good preservation there by Mate Man. Again, one of his larger There's problems. And immediately assaults in the full loss of a conscript squad there. Was just about doing nothing. Work on unit control and unit preservation there. Mate Man. And that T-34 also needs to get away. Working here first the gun is, and of course right now Ace has to be careful. Every single unit loss is one he cannot afford. Since he's already got a small force and any more he loses will result no roll less map he can control again. He's got very little of the map left and again still no sign of this thing being upgraded either. Right there looks like they managed to conduct some huge loss again a bit senseless in the way. He handled it right in front of the Tigress and a veteran to three mortar needs to work on unit preservation once more. Mr. Made Man. Of course, he has to turn things around now. He's got less than 100 points left. He's got barely any map control, barely any units. This is not good. And see, heroic Tiger is moved forward for Deutschland. And there we go, mine pays off, almost wiping out a mortar crew in the process. Again, though, desperation is clear here as he's rushing anything he can towards the victory point. And again, rather disappointed he didn't further mine this one. Tank here holding back, ready to move forwards for the Rudina. Another one arriving. Seven mini Tiger Aces throughout the war. Usually aces of other vehicles then promoted up to Tiger. <laughs> Some of them would eventually be promoted up to King Tiger. And in the case of Otto Carius, one of the few Tiger aces actually survived the war. He actually saw action in a Yak Tiger on the Western Yo. Front. Can't take an armor detection! Actually, he's making use of it probably to sort of now to try to figure out where is the Tiger Ace. And that's actually not a half bad idea again. Note the range again. A Tiger Ace, just like the folks I'm mentioning to Tiger, has quite the range. So be careful around that. Be careful about that. But again, Veteran 2 Tiger also has that impressive range of 50. For that matter, that's also the range of the Stook. Tanks up here clearly setting up for something. But Tiger, Tiger is providing watch over that central point. Then he's hanging about and again, oh, looks like he actually took that T-34. Again, he should have either destroyed it or taken it away. But for now, it seems to have fallen into the hands of Deutschland and has become a Beuter Panzer. So that would actually augment Aces forces a bit active fighting with a bit of armor. Which again is not really what you want at this kind of situation, this kind of juncture. You want to deny any kind of resource you possibly can. T-34 is moving towards the north. He needs to build up his force down here. Another field gun. Also note here what he's actually doing. He's protecting against the base run. He's expecting his opponent to rise for the base of the gates, which is what a lot of players do. And of course he's doing what he can to avoid that. Good idea. These shock troops though need to get out of there. They're just getting massacred. But nice idea there, predicting what his opponent might do. Though of course in this case he's actually not doing it. And no role playing defensively with your Tiger 8 tends to be a bad idea. T-34 is moving in. Again, no machine gun upgrade there, so that's just pointless, futile. Then he's probably likely going to get wiped out. He's in fact on a raid hit, sort of deny his opponent whatever few units might be left. Nice idea there. Squad wiped out. We do see a pack 40 there. He needs to be careful here with his T-34s, they're not really meant to going to be wiping out a base. Now we're seeing the Tiger Ace being called back. Be careful, mate, man, four six. Careful, careful. Pack 40 set having up, getting out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Another Pack 40 moving in, he's trying to get it. To kill it. Of course he's trying to deny as much resource again, he knows it to a certain extent. There we go, Pack down in fact. But again, he needs to get those T-34s out, he can preserve those tanks, that's the best. But now, of course, the Tiger has arrived, he lingered too long. Now he's going to lose both tanks here to the might of the Ace. Destroy engine, just get out of it! No, don't stop him! 
What on earth are you thinking, mate man? Again, unit preservation does seem to be one of his stronger suits, though again. Definitely nice thought there, though, actually going in for the base and raiding, and again forcing the Tigrace to react. The more he can keep the Tigrace moving from point to point, that is, it can actually sort of cover up the vital point, for example, just forcing secured. it to move all the way back here. So, in, the, in general, I mean, the thought's the right one, actually. It's just sort of, you know, not as well executed as could be. And what then getting it? more shock troops right now is perhaps not the best idea. He shouldn't be focusing on a few elite units, he's just focusing on massive units. Again, basically stretching the Tigrace to the limit. So, that's kind of basically be going to be. A one unit fire brigade for Ace basically rushing it from hotspot to hotspot because he simply can't hold everything. He simply doesn't have the units. Awaiting command. And constantly, you know, trying to keep an idea where things are. I think if he. No, he do, isn't close enough, but otherwise, you know, he'd be able to see it on the minimap. Another T 34 arriving. Forces capturing supply sector. Field gun supporting the infantry southern push. Shock troops can now be used to crush the enemy. Perhaps he's predicting something here, pulling in the Tigrace there. They probably should be keeping in a reserve position, but again, now he's leaving this point open for a Soviet counterattack at the same time. I mean, ultimately, he can't cover everything. Also, he needs to be careful about his own mind. If those get set off, that is very unpleasant. Fear can also to move up here. And there we go. Anti tank grenade actually managed to penetrate the thick armor. Of the Tiger Tank, field gun firing rate, that's a damaged engine Tiger Tank. If only he had the munition for a bombing strike, this would be perfect. Not only. Oh, it's even got heavy engine damage. Oh, this would be perfect for a bombing strike. Perfect. There we go. Nice use of targeting, though. He could be a bit farther away, actually. The Tigers can actually respond here, but. I think it may be only doing it to the crew. Oh, never mind. T 34 is moving in here. Coming under fire from Pack 40. Again, inflicting damage while the Tigers is elsewhere. This is good strategic and tactical thinking. Again, the execution in terms of tactics could be better. There we go. Another unit lost. Another unit that cannot be replaced. T-34 moving on again, the, I mean he's stuck in bad territory with a heavily damaged engine. In fact one thing he could have done is actually would have be to rush straight for the Tigrace while he still had his spear exposed towards that point and just ram it hoping to completely disable it out there in the middle of everything. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, what are you doing mate man? No! Yet! Yet! That's terrible! And ultimately, he's forced to pull back both T two T for the force again. He's only got one country for no engineers again. He should have had more country and more engineers out to repair them. Those T thirty fours will now be out of the fight for several minutes, giving Ace the time to actually perhaps pull back his Tiger Ace. Not good. Pull those T thirty fours out there for the enemy. T thirty four gets them. The enemy has only fifty points remaining. And again, I'm rather disappointed there. Very disappointed in you, Nade Man. Needs to be careful around that T-34. It is a danger even to your shock troops. Kind of is, they need to get away again. He might still pull off something by again wiping out what few again. Remaining units Ace has. The unit can't keep dropping. He's got what? A Pantagon, the two mortar crewmen, three pioneers, and the Tiger Ace left. Oh, and the T-34. That is hardly anything. Soviet territory reclaimed. We are taking fire. The only thing that's keeping in the game is the fact that, you know. Mate man is not repairing his T-34s, otherwise he could easily overwhelm this and overwhelm what little else that was left. But instead, he's actually moving them away from the T-34 to repair them. He's not getting more units that can repair them. That's definitely a large tactical blunder. And again, at the same time, he's not keeping pressure on the Tiger Ace. And now that's getting repaired. So right there, that's definitely a mistake from Mate Man. That actually might give his opponent a chance of getting that Tiger Ace back into the fight.
And now finally the 10 minutes have passed for him, so now he can actually get resources back again. Though still, he's got a lot of few units less. There's definitely still a chance here. Field gun sending up. T-34 needs to get the devil out of there. He's still over risking things. In particular, T-34 close to veteran 2, which would be such a waste. Oh, and the conscript, he just lost him like that. Oh, mate, man. You're much too reckless with the infantry. I mean, you're making some good decisions strategically, but again, your tactics really need some work from time to time, and sometimes your priorities as well. I mean, those two T-34s, two tanks, one of them again, also close to veteran 2, are still doing absolutely nothing in his base. Absolutely bloody well nothing. Get that mortar out of there. That's a veteran Z3-1. Backing up. A Tiger Ace moving ahead there with its heavily damaged end. Oh, just regularly damaged damage now. I suppose that's a bit better. And there we go, gone down. Desperately holding on to the victory points. Again, things are not looking good, which might be why he was keeping it there, actually. A mistake. Still finally getting some repairs up. Still needs more units. And there we go. Nice smoke grenade. Basically going, now you see us, now you don't. Now you hear us, now you don't. It's the secret to survival in a very nasty world. Chance here for a bombing strike, then again the Tiger Ace. Oh, and your damage fixed. What do you want, comrade? What a shame, otherwise you could probably pop it right there. And there we go, nice hit from the Tiger Ace. Now he calls in the bombing strike, but again he highlights it right there. And again the Tiger Ace now has a nice chance of dodging it. In fact, he can blitz it. Instead, he just blew up part of the road. So again, some few problems there. Well, a few would be a bit of an understatement. Now, he's low on units, his opponent's low on units. The only thing he's got still going for him is the victory points ticking down. We have a new T-34 standing by. Yes, comrade? I'm just going to speed this up because clearly not much is going to happen. Though again, point left unguarded. And what we see here again, rushing for it. Moving into tanks and we again seeing the Tiger Ace being blitzed in again. He basically has to rush it around to hold things together. And what will happen if it does arrive? Well, I'm pretty sure you can guess it. A smoke grenade. I hope, anyways. Exposing the veteran to ramming it. Well, that was interesting. He actually set it off for that. Ah. But he took too far ahead to actually before ramming. He should have gotten closer before trying that, I think. And ultimately, he just wasted his T-34. And overall, you shouldn't be ramming a Tiger race from the front. Always aim for the rear. That's usually where you have the best chance of doing it. So that was, again, another poor choice from Made Man. Back to Ace. Desperately along to the victory point there, going for the center one here, that there's a T-34 holding up there. Trying to clear up the infantry, folks down the priority again, the Tigers can't take the point, and there we go, he got it! He might have lost a T-34 in the process, but still he's preventing from taking that point again. Kept the pressure up on the victory points, Shock is doing what they can here. And again, getting wiped out. Pushing like a bit too much there, Mr. Made Man. And again, barely any infantry left. Barely any infantry. And note there, he actually doesn't go for it. He goes for the colour point instead of rushing straight for the victory point. That was definitely poor prioritising. There we go, T-34 ramming in. Even ramming into his opponent's T-34. Justin Short. Oh, what madness, what madness. Tiger is now going to be forced to rush back here. He's lost his one other tank, and he's actually going for the most expensive infantry right now, even as things are going to hell. That's hardly very good either, again, more terrible decisions from Ace, all of us, well, hardly all of a sudden. There you go. Not sure why, oh, flanking there, all right, but now, good night. A point in the center taken, and again, 
lacking units to take it. He's not getting more Gunners either. Do in fact he spent some of his resources on veterans for the Panzer Gunners. Ah, oh, my God! And there we go. The Monday novice fight du jour, proving that even novices can defeat the mighty Tiger Ace. And again, proving that those that can't really, really need to get their act together. I mean, this man certainly had a lot of good strategic ideas, but even then, I mean, he was hardly a pro. He was hardly elite. But he's definitely got the, I think, you know, the possibility of actually becoming a very good player. Because ultimately, he did, in many regards, you know, outthink his opponent strategically. He rather thought in the big picture. I mean, he would not just rush at the Tiger Ace, he'd ignore it, he'd go for every other unit, he'd sort of try to bleed him that way, which is good strategic thinking. So in that regard, you know, he's clearly, you know, got some strong strategic foundations there. I mean, constantly, again, attack here, attack there. Don't necessarily engage the Tiger Ace unless you can really win it, which he usually knew he couldn't, so he didn't bother. Instead, he went for every other unit where he knew he could wi win. Good thing there, though, again, his unit preservation really needs a lot of work. He made a lot of stupid decisions here and there, you know, rushing in from different angles, ramming when he shouldn't, not ramming when he could, stopping up in front of packs and such, wasting a lot of valuable units, not really getting the most out of his doctor in terms of you know, conscript pairs at times, again, not repairing his tanks fast enough. There were a lot of problems there. Mining, though, good, definitely good. What I like to see, his opponent on the other hand could have done a lot more with minings. Again, poor use of bunkers, having a lot of them stand about completely empty that is no good definitely no good also not the best use of the tiger race i mean if you get a tiger race you usually want to be aggressive with it he wasn't he tried to play defensively and that really didn't work out and ultimately he lost because of that although again i mean rushing for the opponent's base would have also ended up a bit ugly although he probably should have had some mines up here but still nice there nice there really a thumbs up could have been made better use of the bombing strikes some odd but why i got overall nice with that as well too many Austrians, though. Too many Austrians for Ace. He should have had some Panzer Forces Stooks out, preferably Stooks out with the tanks as well. And again, you're buying the look, man. He shouldn't have gotten lots of Panzer because he shouldn't have gotten a bunch of kind of ideas and he should have focused more on the victory points. But again, that didn't really happen. So a lot of problems. Then again, his handing of the Stook was not really good either. He made a lot of terrible decisions. You know, mining was upon was watching and able to shoot at the Pioneers, basically getting a guaranteed kill. And then as the flame for a tank burst, he moved his field gun crew into it. Not good either. I mean, there were a lot of problems there. Not really good ability usage. Not very good doctrinal usage either. I mean, he used this a bit. He used this once, but no pansectician, no stun grenades. That's no good. I mean, it rather felt like, you know, he right only up for the Tigers. And again, that's a common novice mistake, just like a novice in company use. But just, you know, think only about the King Tiger and then ignore everything else. I mean, just like there. Just getting a King Tiger is not going to win you the game. Just like here, a Tiger Ace is not just going to win you the game. In particular, not since the penalty is much higher with you getting no resources for 10 minutes. <laughs> so, roll again. A lot of things, you know, that Mr. Made Man needs to work on, in particular, in unit preservation. But overall, I mean, he's clearly got a nice, keen, strategic understanding. And I definitely think he can come far with that again if he works on his tactics and he works on sort of, you know, determining when to do things and not. And again, you know, Repairing tanks. I can recommend the Panzer Grenadier Repair Tactics video. Head over to the front page, hit, hit pop it down, and you'll see it right there. So keep that in mind. Overall, hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned a thing or two or three from it. I hope you learned not to fear the Tigers again. I see way too many people who are much too intimidated by that. And again, you know, that's part of it. Just like the King Tiger was in terror, it's part, you know, an intimidation about fear. But again, if you let yourself be controlled by that fear, you are going to lose. If not, well. Again, as we saw here, even a novice can defeat it. So, this is Imperial Dane saying cheers. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, want to subscribe to your friends. If you didn't, well, why not to be playing? Provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.